Hello, in this video, we'll talk about how you can check in code. And the process would be generic using Git. And since I'm continuing this Azure DevOps series, so we'll talk about Azure repos in this. And the process would remain the same. So if you have never done a check in, this video will really help you in understanding the basics of Git. So we'll push the code in Azure repos. We already wrote the code. Even if you have your own code and you want to check in into Azure repos, that will help you. Even in the upcoming videos, we'll, uh, we'll talk about how you can even run CD pipelines as well. So this is a series that I've been working on for Azure DevOps. So even if you have not uh, started with the series, you can just, so these two videos will help you in creating your account on Azure DevOps, right? You can play them in 2X so that you can complete them fastly. And then you can uh, directly jump onto these videos, right? If you have not, if you don't have a program, so you can jump onto these videos so that you can have a first Selenium program, which is running and it is having the HTML report. Then we'll check in here. If you already have the code, you can directly follow this video. So let's begin. So this was the project that we created. Kurana Gaurav is the organization and under one organization, there could be various projects. So I created a project called as automation, right? It could be the name of your project. And under that, there would be various repos generally, uh, development repo, testing repo or D DB repo. So where various kinds of uh, repos can reside here. Right. So you can simply type download git, right? And click on this button or come on this page. And if you are using Windows, download this according to the OS, you can download and install it. And after that, you can open command prompt and run a command like git, right? If it is running, it's good. That means path variables and all are done properly. If not, so in the start, you can click, you can type environment and this will open, edit the system environment variable, right? And then click on this environment variables. This window will open, then you can click on this path and add a path if it is not already added. Some of the softwares while installation, they already added, right? So you will see this and click on OK and click on all the OKs and open a new command prompt, right? So, and then run the command. If it is running, that means, uh, your path variable is set fine and it is sh sharing you some commands as well. Here, this is the project that we created named as automation and we will try to push our code here. So there is already a repo created like this. So I can create a new repo here. I can name the repo as web automation, right? And uh, I can add a readme file where I can describe what is this repo for. You can just follow the process. Once it is done, we'll understand that, that why and what we are doing. So I'll add a readme file so that anybody can read it. If you see this file, it gives, tells that what is this repository is for. And since our project is in Java, we can add a git ignore file. So reading this file, the system knows that, okay, whether these files should be in or not, right? Whether they should reach the repository or not, because there are some local files, like if you run the test again and again, there will be so many reports that need not to be present on the central repo. So we add this uh, file, git ignore, so I create the repo. So now you will see that there is a, there is a name created here, web automation, and it has two files. One file is this readme file. Okay, which is in written in a markdown format and it appears like this. So people can read it and know, okay, what all are the dependency, how to run this and stuff like that, right? And git ignore file will make sure that uh, the class files and the jar files, all of these files should not check in to the one repo, right? After doing this process, we have to run six commands by which uh, your code will reach here. So as of now, where is our code? So if I'll open my code that we wrote last time, this is the code where it's a very simple code because it is just for uh, the demo of the Azure repo. 
or you can check in code in azure web you can have your own code here right which you might have written right so firstly you should have git installed right and then you can uh, click on this plus button to open a command prompt here if you see my screen below there will be a command prompt that will get open right so what i will do is i'll show you the commands so there are six commands right so let's run them and understand them as well right so these are one time command you just have to run them once and uh, the next command is you need almost every day so if you learn these three commands you would learn a good amount of git right so there is lot to learn in the git but this will help you with the basics so to see what are all the commands so the first command is git git init i'll explain it in detail or now you can just type git in it so as soon as you type it you will see a message initialize empty git repository in this dot git and if you will open that folder you will find that there is a hidden folder that gets created called as git right so this is just one time in that folder where the code is present so here i have named it web automation in java but the repo name can be different which i gave only web automation right inside this folder i ran this command git init okay what's next so the next command is that we have to set up a link between the local and the repo so that daily we can check in code take code from there right so what we do is git remote add origin right so that command now i will type again git remote add origin and we will give uh, the link to the repo here uh, which is this so i can click on these files so if you see that now i am on this repo link web automation okay so i will give that git remote add origin i will just control v or i can right click and this so now a link has been set up like what is the next step that we have to do i will call this uh, branch here as the main branch whatever code i have it now these steps are done Right, so I'm done with my one-time thing. Now I have to push this code to the repo. Right. So what generally we do is this our code is ready. So we will first add the files here. So now all the files got added. The first command I ran. Then I will create a commit. Get commit minus m, and we can tell the reason. First commit with the browser program right you should give a very meaningful link so understand right this is also done now the last step i will do and then i will explain you what we did here okay so for that we the command is get push origin and the name of the current branch is main and remote branch i will call the push to um, Let's see if it pushes it over there. Okay, so the command ran successfully, and let me see if anything reached over there. So just refresh this page. Right. So if you see here, it's telling that you updated first program. So this is my branch. Generally, if you push some changes to this repo, you will see uh, option to create a pull request. Right. And there are these files which are shown over here, right? And what I can do is, uh, you can write a title over here that, in short, what it is doing. Then you can write in detail that what all things uh, are doing, and then you can create a pull request. You can click on create button, and a pull request would be raised. And here. Uh, and then what will happen is once somebody approves this pull request and you complete it, then it gets merged to the main branch. Okay. So I'll explain you all of this. If it is not making any sense, it's fine. So now if you see whatever code was there in my system, it has reached over here, the target folder, the dot idea. We can remove this later target and dot idea because these are not 
uh, needed. We can do that by adding more things in the git ignore pipe, right? But if you see whatever code we wrote, it has reached over here. Okay, so we are able to send our code from local to this using the six git commands. This is one time and this is repeated almost every day. So why I say every day is because let's say I want to make some more changes, right? I want to add something to my program, right? Let's say I want to put a driver dot quit also here, right? Now to send uh, these changes, Right now to send this one line change, what I have to do, if I run these three commands, it will go over there. So now let's understand uh, what we did. So uh, Git works. So first of all, let's understand what is a code repo. So let's say there is a company called as Flipkart. Okay. They have like they have they have a code which is having hundred files. Okay. And that may be having 10 lakhs of lines, right? So what happens is there are various developers who are working on this Flipkart site on various modules. These are core developers, right? But these, these files are common, right? So we need a way by which all of this should be able to work. They might be able to work even on simultaneously on the same file, right? Let's say there is a payment module for which there is just one file, payment.java. Right. So, and these people are working on various parts of it. Let's say somebody is working on third party, somebody is working on the, let's say, UPI payments, right? So they should be able to work on this. So we have to provide them a way, right? So first of all, you have to store this hundred uh, files somewhere. So that place is provided by various companies, for example, GitHub. There you can keep your record. We have Azure DevOps. Right. And we have various other things. For example, Bitbucket is also there. So these are the places where you keep it. Now, how you will send it? Okay. As I said, there are 100 files over here, right? And four people are working. So four people are having those 100 files in their system. This person is also having, this person is also having, this person is also having this. So there has to be a process by which if this person updates anything, X on the line number 99, and this person also updates on 98. So when both of the file reaches, it should have the change of 98 as well as 99. So we don't want anything to be lost when these people are working, right? So for that, there is a software called as Git. Okay, it enables this as it's a version control system. It can keep various version of the same files. So and how it works is, as we saw that there are three, let me show you those commands parallelly, right? So initially what we do is we create a connection. We initialize the repo, we create a connection and we call this branch as main, okay? So what will happen is the developer D1, he will be having his local workspace, okay? In which he's having those hundred files. So he will initialize with the command with the init command okay and then uh, with that second command he will develop a connection with this right and whatever he is doing here he is declaring it as main so this is just one time effort this is one this is the second thing and this is the third thing where we told that this is the branch main okay now when this person is making the change let's say on the x file uh, he has the 99th line. He has changed a variable name. Okay, let's say he called the variable name to be cut. Okay, now he wants to push the change over here. So what is the process that we follow is, as I showed you, that there are there are three commands that are generally used on day-to-day -day activities. And once you learn this, uh, this process will become easier for you for doing the check -in. Right. So how it works is that once this person has made changes, let's say he has made changes on X, Y, and Z uh, files, okay? So he'll run the command git add. Okay, When the person, there is a, there is internally how this git works. So there is a stage, okay, when the person runs git add dot. 
So what happens is these files will move to stage. Okay. And after that, what happens is whenever we want to push before to that, we have to create a commit. Okay, commit is a set of changes that you do. Okay, and for that, the command is the second command, which I showed you here. So with the first command, we added it to the staging. And with the commit command, we create a commit. Okay. Let's call this commit as it will be having the hash kind of numbers. SHJ, you will see that, right? So let's ignore that for now. Okay. So when you create uh, the commit, here you give the add command. Here you give the commit command. Now the commit is ready. Right. Now you have to push it over there. Right. So how you push it is you use the third command, which is this get push origin current branch and you give a name to a remote branch. Right. So I will not directly merge into this main branch. I will create a branch, let's say or of over here. Right. So that there is a review process in between. So now to merge from here to here, I will raise a pull request so that other developers also get a chance to review what I have done, right? They can give some comments. So once those things are working fine, then this pull request uh, will go through a review process. Somebody will approve it, right? After it is approved, there is something called as complete. Okay, that I showed you over there that then my changes are merged into this way. Now this D2, D3, D4 people, when they will run that command, get full origin name, then they will see my this XYZ changes in their system as well. Okay. So hope you understood it. And I will share some more diagrams, which will make it even clearer. This one. Okay. So somebody has explained this very nicely with a nice diagram. Okay. So we were working here. We run add. So it went to stage and we committed, it created a commit and then we send the commit to the remote repository, which could be Bitbucket, Azure DevOps, right? So they have shown these two commands mainly here, right? You don't see these things, but you run the command, it happens like this. Okay. So we ran these commands, git add. Okay. Git add will make it to stage. Git commit will make it here, right? And with git push, it will reach here. And then here you create a pull request to add it to the main repo. Okay, there is another diagram where the same thing is explained. So in the local repo, you run add command, then you commit, and then you push it. After that, you pull it, right? Pull you can keep on doing because many people might be sending changes here, right? So uh, hope you like the video. And uh, you are able to follow it. If not, do ask questions. So now we'll do a second check-in. So I do that quickly. I have made this change. I will quit. And in this ignore file, I will add that dot idea. Right? As we uh, don't need that folder. Okay, so if you click on this comment on the left-hand side, right? And so you can see the changes like this, like in apptest.java. If I double click on it, I can see that what all are the changes that I Right in Git Ignore, I have changed that. Now, as I told you, that we just have to do the three commands git add dot commit, git commit minus m, added quit command. Okay. So let me fix the spelling. I did that. Now, what I will do is in case somebody has changed it, but since I'm working alone on this repo, nobody would have changed it. Right. So what I'll do is git push origin main and I'll name this branch as quit maybe just to remember because I did a small change. Okay. So we'll go there and check it out whether we get something over here. Can click on files. You see that there is something coming when you here on the main branch. I can create a pull request. I can say add it and I can select the reviewers and all and click on this create 
kit got created and I can complete it. I can approve it as well, um, but that is not being has been done mandatory over there. Right. So if I go to files and if I see that that change which I wrote over there, whether it got or not, let's see. Okay, we have this change. So if you understood it, let me summarize. Firstly, we installed Git and we check that whether Git is installed correctly or not. Right. And then we run this three commands it in it in the same directory, whether from the terminal or uh, command prompt like this here in this command prompt we ran that git add command right git init command then we set up a link and for this we already created a repo with the readme file and a git node file right and then we declared the current branch as the main branch and then uh, like to send our files over there we did this git add then get commit and then get push origin as I explained to you from this diagram as well, right? So we were here, we the file to staging, then to commit and then we pushed it in the remote branch and then via pull request, this happens and there are some diagrams also that I showed you which can help you understand easily, add commit and then push. Okay, similarly here, workspace, the stage and this, this happens internally. You will not see this, but yeah, this is to explain you that how it is behaving, right? Whether it was Azure Repo or GitLab, all of that, the process would remain the same. So if you like it, next time we'll create a YAML file and we'll create a pipeline. So you can comment on the playlist or on any of the videos and let me know if you get stuck anywhere or if any generic feedback if you have, feel free to comment and don't subscribe. Thank you for watching.